Today, I'm actually talking about training and some tips on how to train effectively. Even though this is designed for cooks and chefs, there is at least one tip that you will be able to get out of this no matter what line of work you're in. And stick around till the end because I have some new and exciting news coming up. So the first problem that a lot of trainers run into when they're brand new is information dumping. As an experienced cook, you have a wealth of knowledge. The general rule of thumb that I have is on average, new employees will retain about 20% of the information they learned in their first like week or so of training. So 20% of one concentrated subject, they retain a lot of information. But if you, if you have 10 or 12 different categories, that 20% gets spread out among all of those categories. It's almost like a type of information creep where you want to convey everything. You're excited to teach. Most trainers are actually really excited to teach somebody something, and, and they love seeing them grow and get better. So you're so excited and so interested in this that you, you just dump everything that you know on them in one day. So there's a lot of things that they probably won't remember the next day they come in, and then that's going to make you frustrated. The best solution for information dumping is you need to organize your training materials and the subjects that you're gonna cover and tackle them one at a time and go through a specific process with each subject. Think about some of the, just the core, like boiled down reduction, you know, like you make a red wine reduction, you boil it down until it gets concentrated, right? So you think of that one subject, that's like the wine, and you boil it down and concentrate it into its core elements. What's a general way to structure your training? Well, the first thing is you tell them what you're going to tell them, you tell them, and then you tell them what you told them. After you explain things to them, then you show them. So explain, we're going to, we're going to use the tenderloin example throughout the whole, throughout this whole thing. So explain the tenderloin, explain that it's expensive, get them, give them that sense of like, okay, it's really important that I don't waste this. Now you cut the packaging and you start trimming the fat and the silver skin off and the chain. And while you're doing this, you explain everything that you're doing along the way. I'm using this knife because of this reason. This is what I'm doing. This is why I'm doing it. This is why I'm holding the knife the way that I am. This is why I'm going underneath the silver skin the way that I am. So that should give you a general overview of the show them process, right? Now, you give them the rest of the case of the tenderloin and let them practice. But you don't just say, okay, have fun, because then what happens is you come back later and they have about half the amount of tenderloin that they should have, and the rest is all over the place and they've made a huge mess. Coaching is part of the practicing process. So you give them the, the case of tenderloins, you watch them, don't tell them anything until they start to mess up, and then gently coach them and guide them into the right direction. Don't be a head, don't make them feel stupid, don't make them feel like they don't belong there or anything like that because you're going to scare people away and then you're going to wonder why you guys can't hold on to anybody. This is the important part. The last step after you show them is you have them show you as if they are training you. So they have you come over and they explain to you how to trim the tenderloin. They don't need to know necessarily everything but say the first thing you want to do is, you know, X, Y, Z, you know, it's really important to take the chain off. Listen for those cues that tell you that they know exactly what's going on. It's not like this process is going to all happen within an hour. It may take longer. As a trainer, your job is to pay attention to those things and try to figure out a way to accommodate. Maybe they keep getting distracted by something and they need to prep in a different area. Maybe they're having a lot more trouble with knife safety, so you recognize that while they're trimming the tenderloin and ask them to stop and be like, okay, so actually before we start the tenderloin, we're gonna go over some knife safety basics because I noticed you almost cut yourself like two times. Another way to help you make things easier in the training process is before you even start training, if you have the ability to go over their application and resume, that's, that's one thing, but ask them directly, what is your experience level in the kitchen? This is extremely important because if they said, I've been cooking my whole life, 
I've been I've been in several different restaurants, some fine dining or whatever. Then the training process for the tenderloin is this. Okay, so we just got a case of tenderloin in. Go ahead and trim that up and come back to me when you're done. That's it. Because if they worked in a fine dining place where they served eight ounce fillets, they should know how to trim fillets. So at that point, then if you start seeing them screw up, then you can give the coaching again without making them feel like an idiot. If they do not have the confidence to do the job, they will do a bad job, even if they know what they're doing. You've seen this before. I know you've seen it before. Or maybe you've experienced this yourself. You, you say something to yourself like, man, I know what I'm doing. Why did I screw this up? I'm new here. I have 10 years of experience. This is a basic dish. Why did I mess it up? It's because you're new and your confidence level isn't there. What are some things to avoid? There's two main training methods that while they do have their place in the kitchen, most of the time they are inappropriate for training. And the two ways are sink or swim and just watch me. I know for a fact that at least one person that's watching this right now has been in a kitchen, they come in with their uniform or whatever, and they say, okay, well, we have all this prep, here's the prep list, have fun. Because they're short-staffed and they don't know how to train correctly. And you just, you get thrown into it, you get thrown on the weeds, you're on the cook line, they put you on grill station, no training, and they just expect you to know everything without communicating anything to you. Maybe you came from Arby's and you just made a step up for, to line cook, and there's things that you don't know how to do. Sink or swim might give them a little bit of a humble pie, if you know what I'm saying, when they when they get in the weeds, but they said they knew everything and didn't need your help. That doesn't mean you watch them suffer, and that doesn't mean that you let them go until they have a breakdown and it, the customers are now paying for it. As a kid with sink or swim, your dad still came to save you. You know, he's not going to actually let you drown. Now the other one is just watch me. So that's essentially where you get to, you get past the tell them stage. Um, and you get to the show them stage, but you never let them do it. Both of these things, even though they're ineffective as overall training tools, it doesn't mean they don't have their place in the kitchen. You just have to find where it fits. There are some people who actually learn better by using just watch me training. So that goes back to what I said previously. They have their places in the kitchen. It's a case by case basis, but it's up to you to determine who is going to learn better through watching you and then just going and doing it on their own and who actually physically has to do it. I'm somebody that you can explain something to me 10 or 12 times but I'm not gonna get it. I have to do it. But me as somebody that's self-aware, I understand this, and so that's something that I will say. My approach with trainees is utilizing this set of things that I had told you about, and what I will do is I will have them on InterExpo with me, and that's actually where I will start them. The reason why is because they are directly with me, so I know they're getting quality information, and on Expo, they watch it all come together. So they hear me and they learn, they learn call outs, they learn timing for steaks versus salad versus saute, appetizers, whatever, whatever's going on, they 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 get to watch it all come together on Inner Expo. They get to see the fully completed meals. They get to see how to run the kitchen, right? So you do that for a little while then you find a station. Ideally, unless you really need them to work a certain position, ask them which one they're most interested in because they will pick up on things a lot faster. If you're brand new to cooking and you just stumbled across this video and you don't even know how to hold a knife, check out this video all about the basics of knife safety. One thing that you can do to improve as a cook is to subscribe to the channel, but also, one thing that I am starting up is the 86th Street Speakeasy. This is a hidden Facebook group that you can only get into in the pinned comments. But otherwise, you guys keep on cooking and have an awesome day, and I'll see you on the next one.